Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been working on an automated landing script for the Kumo lander, which you see here. Kumo meaning spider because the main vehicle looks sort of like a spider to me. And we have a drop tank for this vehicle for those who aren't familiar with it. And so this will drain first, we will dump it, and then this portion will land. I do have Chatterer in this install. But uh, yeah, so that will do the descent and then the fuel up here will do the final bit of descent and then ascent off of the moon's surface. And this is all hydrogen and oxygen so that it is potentially refuelable on the surface of the moon. In that case, if we have in situ resource utilization, that is we can use the moon's water in order to refuel this, we don't need the drop tank. Then this will be able to land on its own and get refueled on the surface of the moon and then get back to orbit. So that is the idea and why I consider it the ideal lunar lander. Uh, aside from the fact that it's reasonably roomy. It is not light, it is 34.5 tons in this configuration and so much heavier than the Apollo lander. So we have four engines. If one goes out then the one opposite it would go will be turned off and it can ascend from the moon using just two. So that is important. So, but this is all about having it land autonomously with a KOS script. They you gotta keep interrupting me. Anyway, so I have a KOS script. It's adapted for my Apollo landing script, so it's not perfectly ideal. And right now I'm just testing it on uh, equatorial trajectory. We'll do different inclinations later, but we're gonna do two different heights. We're going to try from this 62.9 kilometer height, and then we're gonna do 162.9 kilometer height. I cheated into orbit, that's why it's that. Uh, it, the, this current orbit is uh, 1,800,000 mil, 1, meters and then uh, the one point, oh, sorry, 162,000 kilometer orbit is this one, the 1 1.9 million kilometers. So uh, we are going to try to land here and I'll have this show landing predictions. We're not using landing guidance, but It'll show us landing predictions. The little marker might be a little bit off, but I tried to get the, the coordinates right into the script. Anyway, let us... Well, we can't run it here. Now, the script is only configured to do retrograde orbits right now. I could probably fix that, but it's just a bunch of other conditions to make sure it works from either orbit. They'll have to check first. And we want to start it around here so its distance calculations are correct. If you start over here, there's another set of conditions that I could use to make sure its distance calculations are correct. I do that for the space shuttle, for instance, but it's just simpler if I just start it past the point opposite the location and also before the point where it has to retroburn, which is about here. The reason we're retroburning here is because then it can, if it's off plane from the target, uh, try and do a minor inclination burn to adjust that and that would be the ideal place to do it. So that's why the retroburn is there. So, let's have it do its thing. So I've done a lot of testing the past few days with this to adapt it from the Apollo situation to this situation, which is very different. And, but in any case, the goal of the script is to manage it with minimal reignitions. We don't want it to have to reignite a lot. So there's a lot of throttling down, but not a lot of reigniting. So I imitated what Apollo 11 basically did in that script. And that might not be ideal for this, but I decided to work with it since this does have throttling. And there it goes. Note that we started off with 4,618 meters per second. So we'll use that as a reference for how much we use. Okay, so now I can time warp, but just to give you an idea, this is the orbit that sets us up on, and that's our current impact point according to MechJeb. And so we'll have a target difference display from landing guidance, and then you can see in the distance coverage up here, oh, you can't even see my cursor properly, whoops. Okay, so down here you can see the target difference from landing guidance, and you can see our coordinates there. And then the distance coverage here is how far the vehicle thinks it's going to go. And the target distance is there. So that's how far it thinks the target is and then how far it thinks it's going to go. 
at this height, this would be a more optimal sort of pass compared to the 163 kilometer height. I normally wouldn't want it at 163 kilometers, but that's just to show that it can handle the altitude variation. I don't want it to be too dependent on being exactly at the right height. Now one thing it did during the main retro burn and it still does here is if it thinks it's not exactly lined up with the target it will lean to one side. And it's pitching up partly to make sure that because it's leaning to one side it's accounting for that. Oh, so we have to drop the drop tanks. So we have to allow some extra time. We can't do a pure suicide burn. Uh, that could cause problems. The reason the drop tanks are the way they are is because the liquid oxygen tanks are here, and these are the liquid hydrogen tanks. So the center of mass is actually here, and so that's why they're mounted forward like this. Uh, otherwise, it would shift the vehicle's center of mass. Incidentally, the drop tanks are exactly the same tanks up here. They just have the wrap all the way around it. Uh, it's three of these hydrogen tanks and three of these oxygen tanks all with wrap around them. We'll see how much it actually uses during this descent burn. But we will be dumping some in the drop tanks, so we'll have to get the number before the drop tanks separate. And again, the drop tanks wouldn't be necessary if we can refuel on the moon, so that's the idea of the design. So we've been burning full thrust all the way through so far. That will not be the case for the one with the high pass. That one will throttle down a lot more. Now the landing guidance number matches more what we are getting from here. You can see if you subtract the distance coverage from the target distance here, uh, it more closely matches that number. It's still been burning full thrust all the way through. Again, that's not going to be the case with the high pass one, but that was always going to be less efficient. But how much less efficient? They're still pretty high up though, so that's not great. There's plenty of room for improvement, but right now the main goal is to make sure that the script can land everything within render range of each other. So we're looking ideally not more than half of uh, the render range from the target point, so 1.1 kilometers would be good. But if it's within 2 kilometers of the target point, point that's not impossible and we're pretty close right now so maybe I should just go for with the 1.1 idea we can refine this a bit right now we're still going long we're pretty much in line though but then again we started off at the equator we'll do the other tests later to make sure that we can hit any old target that's at least reasonably close to the trajectory and with an inclination there shouldn't be a problem with that because the distance calculation doesn't care about that. The distance calculation is not dependent on everything being at the equator. That was just for convenience when I was cheating it into orbit. So now we have throttled down. I better prepare to get the drop tank up a little bit of flutteriness there. Preparing to get the drop tank number. Okay, it changes mode. Okay, it looked like 29.38 and then we dropped basically 200 meters per second in there. Okay, final bit of descent. I really need to put a piston in the back of this so that it doesn't rock to the back. It can topple over in that direction. Uh, 
Yeah, see, see. Uh, so yeah, uh, you should put something in the back to make sure that doesn't happen. But so we ended up with 2,549 there. And so on the descent tanks, we used 1,680. And then on the internal fuel, we used 189. So not too bad. In total, that's 1,869. So that's from the low trajectory. And pretty good for targeted landing especially uh, let's try from the high trajectory so I'm just going to load up the save we're going to set it to this higher orbit again really this would be inefficient and we wouldn't want to come in from such a high orbit but just in case and to demonstrate the ability of it to deal with different heights Though it's still a circular orbit. A lopsided orbit is much harder than a circular orbit to deal with. And I'm not going to change the script at all. The burn point is not changed because of the logic of why we're burning here to help with inclination corrections. And also the periapsis height is not changed. Uh, so we're not trying to, from a greater height, bring our orbit closer to surface, we could do that. We could make the main adjust adjustment that we do for the height that we're at be that we're going to bring the periapsis lower. But um, I am not doing that right now. And that's mainly because doing that makes the gap between the low height situation and the high height situation too much different. It makes everything much more varied if you try and bring the orbit down much uh, sharply. We want sort of a similar descent profile. Even though maybe it would be more efficient having a sharper descent profile with this. My hope with this stuff is that in the Rays Aerospace Tourism series that we can have things be automated so that I won't have to have the UI up, but also uh, if we could be in internal view and program this stuff happening, though I might want to fix the interior of this. Um, that seems to be a mismatch in things here. I don't know what those plates are, but they probably ought not to be here. Anyway, yeah, eventually we'll be able to control KOS here somehow. Maybe I don't have the KOS plugin for raster prop monitor or something. I think there's a way. Anyway, that's the idea. I wonder what plates it was looking at. Seems like the interior isn't oriented properly, but then again, there's only really two windows here. Hmm. But it sure doesn't seem like we're lined up with those two windows. <laughs> I'll have to check on that. Oh, so I can't figure out what's up with the plumes. We seem to be getting the stock plumes, even though I specifically asked real plumes to give me the Hydrolox upper blue. Okay, so we have Thrall down, as, and as I warned, it's going to do this a lot more. Very early, in fact. At the moment, our trajectory looks like that. Okay, we are thralling up again now. So we're like that. It'll probably change its mind in a little bit. Whereas the low pass ended up a little bit long, we were expecting this one to fall a little bit short. And part of the goal that I've been aiming for is to close this gap between them. Initially it was about 100 kilometers wide. Uh, with just using the regular Apollo landing script. So I've had to make adjustments in order to narrow the gap. And the uh, low pass went a little bit too far compared to what I wanted. We ended up at like 1.7 kilometers instead of 1.1. And we'll see how this one does. Okay, change of mode. Okay, it looked like 20 to me. Too 
2,820. So that's 1,798, or that approach took more, uh, 108 meters per second more. From the drop tank, though. Uh, oh, stuck the landing. Uh, but it took less from the lander bit. And we landed with 2,549 last time, this 2,570. So, summing it all up. And we're 1.1 kilometers away, so this is okay, but uh, this is 1.1 kilometers uh, too short, and the other one was 1.7 too long. So they're not quite in render range. So this version took 1,966 altogether, or 90, uh, sorry, 97 meters per second more than the low pass. Which is not too bad. Still under 2,000 meters per second for the targeted landing. So, anyway, those are my results with the Kumo lander and its automated landing script so far. And we'll try many variations. I think possibly during a live stream today, we'll try landing it with some variations and see how it does. And I continue to work on it and maybe improve the interior here. I don't know, why does it seem like we're inside... Uh, there's like those... Uh, structural panels, right? Those are like structural panels. Why? And and struts and all. There's, there's nothing like that inside the vehicle, is there? I'm so confused. Anyway, uh, yep. So hopefully it will be a reliable little lander and landing script for us in the future. But with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.